Okay, so uh, as I was saying, um, uh, I came home. I felt this. I felt this energy that I couldn't. I couldn't figure out. So I was then a week later guided to Crestone, Colorado. I went up there, and I knew the main reason I went there was to meet these two women. Uh, a woman named Carol Fitzpatrick um, from the East Coast, and also um, a woman named Lynn McCallum. And um, Lynn ended up coming home with me and staying a few nights. Uh, Lynn is actually here. She's the big, tall, blonde, Palladian goddess. Anyways, and so when Lynn pulls into my driveway, because I had already been home for a couple hours, I was ahead of her, she sits out there for about a half hour. And when she came in the house, I asked her, I said, well, uh, what were you doing out there, Lynn? She said, well, I had to do psyche work on me because the, the, something's going on energetically here. I feel some, some energy, some kind of sadness. And I'm like, wow, interesting. I said, yes, I felt the same thing a week ago when I came home. I've been gone for months. So she went into meditation trying to figure out what this was about. And the next morning she says, I know what it's about. And it's, it's the aquifer underneath of us. The aquifer is sad. And I'm thinking, I live in the middle of the pristine mountains up here, and I'm aquifer. Wow. Okay. So I asked Spirit, you know, guide us, what do we need to do? And I asked Lynn, what do, we, what do we need to do here? What can we do? She says, I don't know, some kind of ceremony. We must do some kind of a ceremony. Next morning, a friend sends me an email with a, a link to a YouTube video. He said, I think you're supposed to look at this, Randy. So I, I go into the, the YouTube link, I watch it, and it's a man named Golden Eagle um, Marshall Jack, Marshall Jack Golden Eagle. And he's describing how to build one of these <coughs> water wheels, which you're all familiar with water, um, with medicine wheels, Native American. And so I'm watching this, and I basically, um, I was like, wow, this is it. This is what we need to do. And I showed it to Lynn. Lynn watched it. She says, yes, this is what we need to do, Randy. This is exactly what we need to do. So I started gathering the materials figuring out where it's supposed to be on the land, which act up, ended up being right next to where um, this was the actually original one right here, which it, there used to be a big greenhouse right there uh, just a couple of years back. And this is actually where the vort uh, pyramid used to be over the spa right there inside of the greenhouse. So. So I got the gathered materials, I cleared the land, and then I called up several people who I'd um, like to help me build this. And so we basically built it. And um, you could instantly feel after we were finished, you could feel the energy of the aquifer shift and change. The energy and the reason this was happening, we went deeper, Lynn went deeper into this. The reason it was happening is because Los Alamos Laboratories, we're doing some experimental stuff down in the earth, and it was messing with the aquifers, running through that whole area. Which aquifer was this that you did this on? What's that? Which aquifer was it that you did this on? To start well, with? this is the part of the Oglala, o o Oglala, am I from aquifer? Oglala. 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 I live in, uh, uh, it's called Moreno Valley, but it's, it's in between Eagle Nest and Angel Fire, okay. New Mexico, up above Taos, New Mexico. I live inside the Enchanted Circle, and literally there is a uh, lake just about six miles away, a crow flies from me, so there's the house, there's the lake behind it, there's the mountains behind it, the other side. This is Blue Lake, the sacred Blue Lake is right up in these mountains here. It is a starseed portal, there's no doubt about it. It's a very sacred place for the Taos Pueblo. You can't go up there. Uh, if they catch you up there, they, they, you know, you're looking to get in some big trouble. <laughs> I do hike across the mountains, and I'm able to hike across those mountains, stay on the borderline, and just walk down about 20 yards off of the borderline, and you can look down into the, the lake, but you can't you know, go down there. Anyway, so, <clears throat> so we built it, and I also had this copper pyramid that was already sitting on the land. 
basically. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the Copper Pyramid used to be for another energetic spot that was on the land. And after I built it, I pretty much asked the rest of the group, well, do we feel we should put this, um, um, should, we put this should we put this on the land? And everybody agreed, or put it over the water, the water, the water wheel, and everybody agreed, yes, definitely. Um, so I did, and I come to a realization that... Um, <clears throat> I come to a realization basically that this is one of the simplest and most effective ways at assisting our waterways around us, underneath of us, the rivers, lakes, and streams. These water wheels will energetically connect together. Whatever water wheel is like in the middle of a city somewhere is going to be linking and connecting to the one on my land and vice versa. Okay. Um, I changed a bit about how Golden Eagle was guiding, uh, you know, guiding to do his, and it's not about right or wrong or good or bad. I just follow my guidance to the best of my ability and do what my guidance uh, shares with me. And one thing. Um, Randy, can I just? Mm -hmm. I just want to specify: is Marshall Jack is Golden Eagle? It's not Chief Golden Eagle. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know yeah. If somebody missed that. Okay. They might not know who Marshall Jack is. Uh, right. Okay, yeah. Um, and he's been building them. Marshall Jack has been building them, I think, for about three years or so. I believe so. I'm not sure. If that's yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I'm going to start to a place of, of, of I'm going to give you a, a kind of a step-by-step -step procedure of what I did. Okay. Now, you be creative with this when you, when you go to choose to build yours. Um, they don't, there's no right or wrong about this. They're activated by intentions. They're activated by thoughts and intentions. And yet, I'm also a believer that everything in the universe, as my teacher told me, uh, Grandmother Celia, everything in the universe has to do with numbers. Okay? So, so I do believe there's a power when you combine intentions and love with sacred geometric patterns and crystals and numerology or, or, or numbers that it can all really really be amplified in a, in a great way. Eventually I will actually be any of you who've seen the, the big vortex ampules they will be suspended from a pyramid that are over the top of these and they will be running and there will be a little pond underneath that will actually be set into the ground with a grade and rock will go over it and you'll still have your center big crystal because these vortexes are a cosmic antenna and they'll even amplify what is happening. <clears throat> so, uh, so basically these are some of the basic materials uh, that we can start off with to, to make this simple as possible, I found. The first one that I did um, a couple years ago on the property I came to realize this summer, I spent days, days keeping the plant life out of the wheel. And I also discovered the deer love the wheel. <laughs> Every night I have deer that go down and I can see their new tracks and they, they'll knock a few crystals around and do <laughs> something about it. They love that place. And I think their energy is also, their energy is doing something there also. Um, they're, they're getting something out of it, and the wheel is getting something out of it. So what I discovered back to the, uh, the, the, the weeding is that to make these last for a lifetime, if you buy a high-quality weed block and you stake it down, if you live in an area where there's a lot of plant life, I actually highly recommend this. Invest the money into a good quality 20-year and after it's underneath gravel, that will last. The, the stuff, I bought the commercial grade, um, and it does last 20 years, and it will last way longer than that if it's buried under, under gravel or bark or whatever top stuff you want to put on top of it. Um, and where you place your crystals, you want to cut a hole in the block. So the crystals are actually touching the earth. 
That's what my guidance tells me. So here's three different patterns, basically. Um, three different patterns that I've came up, uh, that I've been guided in. Actually, my friend Ridge and Allison assisted me with this one here. We did this one in Hummingbird Ranch, New Mexico. Um, it's more of the star pattern. This is one that I will eventually do, I know, but it hasn't come to me. This is the nine spoke star. Uh, you can do, again, what you're guided. Six spoke, nine spoke. Um, I feel the new energies, though, at this point, um, I really like this eight spoke. And this is the one that I did. Uh, it has the Vesica Pisces, as you see, in the middle. And I, I actually, I think it's, uh, for me, I like drawing things out on paper before I start it. It just makes it uh, more simple for me when I'm going to actually physically um, manifest it onto the earth. So something that we, to even amplify these more, if any of you are familiar with dowsing and using dowsing rods or your intuitive guidance or whatever it is that however you um, get intuition or you get fall to a place, I use dowsing rods. It works for me and I use pendulums because that's what works for me. I get out of the way, I ask for divine guidance because if you can find a vortex on the earth or more of a power spot um, and you put the, the actually center of your wheel at that spot, it will be amplified even more. Okay? So again, yeah, use what you, whatever works best for you. Um, and then basically once you find that location, which I, in the beginning, would take dowsing rods and I just walk around and tell, and I would set my intentions, what I'm looking for, and then once the rods cross, I'm like, okay, here it is. This is the place. And then so I make a mark. So now I know where the center of my wheel is. And another thing you can do in cases, if you have a lot of rock or vegetation going on, try to find a place in circumstances where it's not going to be so complicated to level the land and to clear it out. Um, So then, uh, it's important to, once you found that place, determine your, your size of your wheel. How, 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 how big around is this wheel going to be? Again, determining of your ground, of what's going on. How many trees? Is there a tree right there and one over here? Determine, uh, uh, yeah, what you have to work with so you're not cutting the tree down. Because um, I don't recommend that. Um, and sometimes you can actually have a tree right in the middle of one of these two. We have one in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where we actually planted a tree that's in the middle. So I do recommend if you can keep it at 9, 12, 18 feet, that is my recommendation, but follow your, follow your inner guidance. Uh, level the ground. So get your ground level. Um, weed block is optional, like I say. In a community where you have several people, not such a big deal to go out there and pull a few weeds. But I found by myself this year um, that I spent literally three to four full days um, once every three weeks of pulling all those plants out of there. And I don't like even killing them myself. I, I don't like, I prefer going down there sitting and meditating and putting my love and appreciation to the waterways of the planet instead of down on my hands and knees pulling, pulling weeds. So, um, <clears throat> so you make your, um, basically you make your, your outer circle uh, with a line and spike and and then basically place around the edge all of your larger stone beings so so here we are we've we've leveled out the ground in this case um, I'm redoing this one I just did this actually last week um, I I'm, I'm redid it because the alignment needed to be changed the spokes needed to be changed so I just took all the big, all the stone beans, all the crystals, everything out of the circle. I actually brought the circle in from a 20-foot circle to an 18. And so here you have it. You, you, you put a spike in the very center. Ideally, you take like a, a carabine uh, snap, or I had a little circle ring, something that I used to use in the fishing, my fishing industry, and tie the string to that, that ring or that snap and slip it over your spike. Measure out basically nine feet your radius because half of if it's a 18 foot circle it's going to be a nine foot radius. Put your tape measure, tie the string to another stake or spike. 
tighten it up, snug the screen up, get your tape measure, and now, now you have it. Now you just take that and you walk it, and you just basically walk it around, keeping the string tight. Um, and this is going to spin easily, that's why I use a staff instead of tying it. It's going to easily spin around in a circle. So once you have that, um, then you can start placing your stone beings. I actually, I place the stones right up to the outer edge. I put the stones right up to the outer edge is what I did, but that's just what I did. And, and <clears throat> do what you feel called to. Uh, here, here is with the weed block version. So with the weed block version, after you put the weed block down and you tack it, because you want to tack it with staples every once in a while, they're little spikes about that long, with a, they're like a U, U spike. Um, you take this thing, same concept, except for you use one of these um, markers, which you can get at Home Depot, Lowe's. They call them mean streaks. Okay, it's a white marker that that marks very easily um, your 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 weed block. So you got the mark. Once you got your mark, as you see, I placed all the stones just on the outer, right on the edge of the circle. You got all your stone beings, um, which you of course. Everything that goes into this, we want to bless. Um, every stone, every glass bead. The stone beings, in my opinion, are really stepping up to the plate at this time. They want to, they want to also step up and, and, and help out the situations. And so the more we bless and honor the crystal and stone beings, the more they're going to say, yes, I'm ready to go to work. Yes, I'm ready to, to do my part that I can do. And that is one of the reasons why, uh, in my opinion, it is so important to bless everything you put in here. Honor, bless it. So, so now we, once we have the circle, and we got the outer circle of the stones, now we're going to put down our base course. That can be, it can be shredded, um, uh, like not sawdust, but uh, wood chips of any sort. It can be, I use, I use pea gravel. I actually, uh, it's really inexpensive. I paid $45 for a full square yard of it, um, which covered that whole 18 foot circle um, about two to three inches deep. And you, it's really common to have at your local, it's just two miles down the road for me. Um, but again, beauty bark, uh, nutshells, uh, you know, whatever you find that works for you. I don't recommend um, soil or dirt, though, especially if you're putting weed block down. Um, it's because it's going to want the plant life to grow more. So what Carol Fitzpatrick and a friend of mine, um, Kim Trevino, when they were building one of these in Montana, they got very clear guidance. The north needs to be shifted 17 degrees to the northwest. Okay. This has to do with, I believe, the new energies coming in and that Gaia is still going through her alignment and shifting and changing. But these two people are very, for me, very in tune people and for both of them to get it. And then they shared it with me and I asked my higher guidance, tell me about this, is this, is this, for me to be doing this and taking this? And it was very clear, yes. So, um, so you basically, um, we want to do this. And I'll, I'm going to show you how I easily did it. And again, there's other ways of doing it, defining these directions. But um, how, how, I, how I did it, because of the fact that I had a really inexpensive pen laser. This is a, a little $12 uh, pen laser. And so I started thinking, okay, wait a minute, how can I make this easy? I was doing this on my own this time, um, because I was guided I was actually supposed to. Uh, so I put my base course down, you got your spike in the middle, so now we're going to go to getting our alignment. So what I did is, this is a, you don't have to do this, this could be a square piece of board, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is one of my first pendulum boards that I made uh, like 17 years ago when I first started working with a pendulum. And I realized, oh, you know what? If I get one of these little $4 cheap plastic uh, 
protractors, I can literally find out easily. I can put a line on the board that's due north and south. I can then set my compass on that line, and then I can find out what 17 degrees basically is. By using this, you can literally find out, you can draw your east, northeast, southwest, and you can find what 17 degrees is, make your marks with this, simple way of making the mark, pull it off, put a ruler. So now you basically have a board, and it doesn't have to be round like this, it could be anything, that was easy for me to stick this, I put a little notch under the bottom, I took a drill so it could set right on my spike. So now I sit on the spike, I set the compass on the board, I find my exact north, where north is. Now, all I do is I adjust it and I adjust my board to the north that already had the marks. Now I, I, only, I just move it. So this was a due north mark. Here's 17 degrees to the northwest. So then all these other marks that I lined up, basically, the red ones are all actually, so this right here would be actually the other, other direction. So easily what I found was for me to make this easy, I set my um, laser and I taped it with a piece of tape. So all I had to do is now is take my spike, take my spike and, and, and set it, set it uh, along the edge of the circle, right on the, the line of the outer circle. And once the laser hit the hit the spike, I knew exactly that's an alignment. So it made it real easy. So once you, once you do once you do north, what I did is just flip the laser exactly around the other way, and I do the exactly south. I do the east, I flip it over, I do the west. So now you have all your eight eight spikes perfectly in alignment, and um, then you move on. Then for me, then you move on to the next steps, um, <clears throat> which for me this is what I did. But it doesn't have to be this way. But it worked out nicely that. I made my middle circle uh, 54 inch radius, which radius is half of your circle, so it comes out to a circle that's 108 inches across. That's the very inner circle off the middle spike. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Yes, so then I, then I created what is the, um, the Vesica Pisces. So I'm going to shift it so you can see. Okay. So basically, you have your you have your inner circle you've made, and now I did. I realized after I kind of did what I did that oh, okay, I got a little ahead of myself on this. I should have been easier for me to do this. Ideally, putting all the lines in first, I found, is, is the best way of doing this. Yet, when you do this, make sure you're not walking or people aren't walking on the lines because they can. With pea gravel, they can easily get covered up, okay? <clears throat> but for me, I found, yes, it's, it's ideally make all the lines first. So you make your inner circle, you make your middle circle, you make your vesica Pisces, and now you make your eight lines that go from the center to all the eight spikes that you have going on. And I can, anybody who's interested in this, I can, you know, give you the, the notes to this so you have the numbers because for this to work out right, um, I aligned this to the north and the south. This Vesica Pisces, I aligned it to the north and the south, meaning when what I did was, yes, this is east and west and the Vesica Pisces was running north and south. I took it three inches in from this, this middle circle. Um, to three inches on the other side of the center circle out. So you basically went, I went three inches out this way and three inches in from this circle. And then I found the center of that, put my spike, which is about right in here. You measure what that distance is. You put your spike, you cut that in half, and now you'll be able to draw a basically a perfect circle. And then the same way with this one which you can actually, no, you can't see it at this angle, but um, okay, again, you use your snap because it's uh, so easy to use. Every time it just slides around the pole really easily, any type of a snap that's slippery, 
Um, so basically, you know, now, now you have all your, <clears throat> you have your circles, you have your lines. What I found is that I did start in the middle. I started in the middle and I worked my way out. I did the middle, middle circle. Actually, I did the middle circle. There's three main circles. There's the center, the middle one, and then the outer one. And I did the middle circle, the inner circle, the vesica Pisces, and I did. Uh, <clears throat> I then put in the lines, basically, um, and color. Color is really. Uh, I really like using color. So, because everything's vibration, everything's frequency. So the best of your ability, if you can, use as much local materials that you have on your property and your land and around where you live, definitely. Uh, like, I used lapidolite. Uh, this is a purplish colored stone, actually, which is called lapidolite. And it's just down the road from me, like five miles down the road, and right in this little vein right next to the road. And uh, many crystal beings uh, where I live, a lot, of, a lot of crystal, quartz crystal, and quartz in the land, so I used as much as I could, but there was some that I, that I didn't, and that was white rock. I didn't have any white. So you can go to uh, like Home Depot or Walmart, and you can get a 50-pound bag of this white marble for $4.50, okay? And again, uh, you know, bless it. Just bless it. It all comes from the Divine Mother, and it, it, it energetically loves to be a part of this. So... Um, whoop. Okay, so here we are, pretty much, um, we've got our Vesica Pisces, we've created our center circle, I started here in the red, um, I've started the lines, and, and now what, I'm, what we want to do is, this is now where you put the, um, the, the draw the, the lines for the petals, basically. And the simplest way, I tried to figure out how can I make this symmetric. I, I thought about a chunk of cardboard for pattern. And I, I've come to a realization that if you put your spike here and you run the line, you'll do the next, the, the next flower petal, I call it, call it a, you'll, you'll do this side. And then you flip the string over and you leave it there and you'll be able to do the other side of this point right here. So you shift this to here and you're going to be able to keep doing that. You'll do one side here, you'll do the other side of this one over here. Pretty soon you go all the way around and you have, um, you have your, your entire um, petal. And then I fill in the rocks for those. And I add the stones to fill in those. And what I eventually I did last was I believe I, um, okay, so now you have all your rock beings in place, your crystal beings, not in place yet. The last thing I do is I put the, I use double terminator quartz crystal, which you can get these um, uh, from a place here in Colorado, I forget the name of it right now. Uh, I think it's Rocky Mountain Crystals, but you can get them for about seven, eight dollars a piece. A double terminated quartz crystal, about you know, about three to four inches long. Okay. I also got silonite towers there too. They're about they're about this big, and you can get them for about again seven, eight dollars a piece. You have to buy one hundred and fifty dollars worth of them to get the price. But to me, that's not much of an investment. Between the gravel, the stone beings, the energy, the, the money acquired, I think I have about two to two fifty to three hundred dollars into this wheel. But you know, to me, that's very minimal of what I can give back to Mother Earth for all she has been giving me for all these years. Truly minimal. And um, and I still sleep in my garage and rent out my house to people for vacation renters. So it's not like um, I'm rolling in the dough. I'm rolling in love, and that's more important than the dough, right? <laughs> okay. So, uh, one thing that uh, we start off with, and that's using um, your, your, your crystals. First thing I do with them is I place them in salt water, okay? 
It can be just Morton's. Morton's salt doesn't have to be anything fancy. Uh, <clears throat> soak them in the salt water for, for a day and rinse them off when you're done. And then the next thing I do is I put them on um, this pattern. At the last Star Knowledge Conference I went to in Palm Springs, there was this man there, uh, Reiki. And out of all the vendors, he really, he's the one that caught my attention the most. And I, I feel, feel strongly about what he's doing with this pattern. He, he's created this pattern, he calls the Metatron's Wheel. And what he does with this pattern is he puts it, they're just little, you put it on a mirror. And then you put your crystals on top of this pattern, and you put a, a blue glass um, glass over it, cup. It's like a, it's like a cobalt blue color. And I first bless the crystals. I, know, I believe in the power of blessing things three ways. With your hands, with your heart, and with your breath. Okay. I then place those crystals that I've just blessed. They just came out of the, the, the cleansing from the, the salt water. I then place them on this pattern, and I put the glass over it with my blessings and my intentions, and then I let it sit there for 24 hours. Let the sunlight hit it, and I let them sit there for 24 hours. <clears throat> um, to me, usually, even though it doesn't make sense, when my guidance tells me something, um, I do it. And as it's done with intention and love again, uh, it's just amplified. So this is the, the next step, taking the crystals and taking the piece of wire. And a friend of mine, um, Brian Besco, um, has came up with a new length that I feel is uh, very powerful. It's 41.7111 inches. If that doesn't resonate with you, use the length of 23 and a half inches, which is the sacred cubit that a man named Slim Sperling came up with. And then you take that wire and you wrap around these crystals. And after I have done that, After I've done that, I use this, uh, I came across a woman named um, uh, Catherine, Catherine Parker, and I believe her work is really, really amazing work that she's bringing through. And it's about sacred syllables and the power of chanting these sacred syllables internally, we don't have to say them out loud, but the power of chanting this chant, Kri, Le, Am, Ma. So you take your wrap crystals, you hold them in your hand, and you chant the, the words, Kri, Le, Am, Ma. This sounds like cry, but it's pronounced Kri, Le, Am, Ma. Another powerful one that she just recently discovered, I just talked to Catherine actually last night, and um, is the term uh, Kri Ama Mar. Kri Ama Mar. Try this sometimes yourself even, you know. Uh, it, it's interesting what happens in the body when you chant these syllables. So. Chant the syllables a, a several times to the crystals. Now the crystals are, in my opinion, fully charged, ready to do their work. And these syllables are also what they're doing as Brian's new 41.711. It's part of what they're doing is bringing these new Christ consciousness codes that are streaming into this planet. It's a it's amplifying this. I don't have the best terminology, Brian. Um, he would be the man to talk to you about this more. It's kind of more his deal, but it is amplifying these new, bringing this energy from the heavens down into the earth. And um, I, it's just, it's simple, yet, yet amazing. Uh, I feel simple, yet amazing, and the power of this. 
So now we're going to um, we're going to put these crystals in place, and again, make sure if, if you use the weed block that where the crystals go in the place here on the outer points, that you make sure the um, you put a little hole in the weed block to allow that crystal to touch down into the actual soil, in the center. Uh, you can't see them very well, but they're the selenite crystals, the selenite towers, I placed here at these points. And the double terminated quartz with the, I placed in these points. And it was kind of, it was actually, uh, it was interesting because I didn't know if this pyramid was going to fit back in here. Uh, because I, it was a 20 foot circle, and it, and it was in the prior one, but this was 18. And, and I just kind of like, well... If it works, it's going to work. This pyramid was built, you know, eight years ago. Um, I had a, I had actually had a Walmart swimming pool, and I hung one of my vortex systems off of this pyramid, and I put it over this Walmart swimming pool, <laughs> and we had a lot of fun because <laughs> somebody gave me a big heater, and I actually heated this water up to 100, 101 degrees. So we had this big Walmart swimming pool with this living water thing going on. It was, it was interesting. Anyways, so I go to place this pyramid in there. I call my son Jake to come and help me because I, I knew I would scuff everything up if I didn't have some help. And uh, we, we place it in there and it perfectly aligned with the four grandmothers. Okay, this is, the four grandmothers are, um, your directions basically from the, the, the northeast, the southeast, okay, the southwest, and the northwest are a representation here of the four grandmothers. And I use four citrine quartz crystals, okay, going to those directions representing the four grandmothers. And um, again, my guidance told me to. Uh, to bring this in, and it, it, it just definitely resonated with me. So here is about the four grandmothers and their representation. The Northeast is integrity. The Southeast, honor. Southwest, respect. Northwest, honesty. Okay. So as I place those <coughs> citrine crystals with intentions and representing the four grandmothers in those directions. And I use the amethyst crystals four of them in the very center, to represent the directions uh, the northeast, southwest. So the energies of those beings and the energies that those directions um, bring into the wheel. So, um, see, we pretty much... So night towers, yes. Okay, so... Um, what I did do, oh, my son Jake, he was kind of like, uh, he didn't stay around long. Um, once I placed the pyramid in here, I realized, ah, I don't like that. The, the, the pipe was sitting on top of these, and it's like, mm, no, that's got to be buried. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I said, Jake, we got to start moving these uh, stones out of, the, out of the way so we can, we can bury the bottom. I, it's got to be down on the earth. It's messing up the sacred geometric pattern. I don't like this. And Jay kind of looks at me like, oh, Dad, I, I think it's time for me to go. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, thank you anyways. I mean, he, Jake, Jake did help me to do some of these lines. That was the other reason. He came in a couple hours earlier, and he helped me to make some of these outer lines. And so we just put our love into it, and then I set it on there, and I like Jake, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but we, we, this is not going to work. We, <laughs> Like, anyway, he knows I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and that's just how, I, how it is. And <laughs> so uh, eventually, um, uh, I will see, I, I do vision, as I said earlier, we will see one of these being put in the middle of these. And... Um, the, literally, the water, will, the water will pump up one of the pipes. You'll have one of these big vortexes. There will be a uh, built-in tub that goes down into the earth, and there'll still be crystal beings there, 
and the water will recirculate and keep vortexing, creating this cosmic energy being pulled, even amplified down into the earth. And um, they're fun, you know. The, the, this is, um, I love creating artistic stuff, I found. I never thought this as being a commercial fisherman all my life. And, but I actually really enjoy doing things, allowing the divine to flow through me and to co-create um, beauty and intentions uh, that are backed up with the beauty. So if there's any, uh, any questions anybody has, um, yeah. Can I get a copy of the, uh, the, your pr presentation? You bet, yeah. Because yeah. I've been taking pictures of it, but I've realized I'm about to run out of pictures, and I, I don't think I've gotten it all. So if I can have a copy of it, yeah. it'll help us when we go to build ours. Yeah, you we're definitely going to bless the creek yeah. and bless the water under us as well. Good for you, brother. Yes. As I say, you know, this really is the most powerful and simplest way. I know this now. I, I never would have believed it years ago, but I know this now. One of the simplest ways we can affect the waterways of this planet. Um, yeah. yeah. So. so will you have a pump to pump the water up to the vortices? And down? It, that's correct. That's what it'll be. And, you know, I've already, I've already done this in, um, in some of my installations. Uh, um, some of the installations I've already done with the spas, the healing water spas, and um, when you, there's really some, there's really some amazing things that happen when you get into this energy field here, truly. Uh, I can't totally explain it, but you're, you're, you're working with time and space. Um, you're working with, I believe, you're either working with dimensionally shifting. Um, because I've never had this happen, but people get underneath this in this area right here. And what happens is when you get under, you stand and you create this just tall enough, and it's, it's just right above your head where the water comes out. You can also get under it, and this cone, this cone just sprays over your head. You can literally get under that cone and wipe your eyes off, and you can open your eyes up. You can literally now and you can tip your head back and you actually can look right up into this thing and when you turn this light, the lights I use go through 12 different spectrums of color. It's like we don't need mushrooms or any uh, psychedelic drugs anymore. <laughs> we never did need them, but, <laughs> but, but in this case, it's really, it's a, it's a trip, it's a journey. Uh, there's no doubt about it. So I, I uh, recommend someday, um, I'm working on getting funding. I want you all to know that I've decided, not, I've actually created a, a demand for these, these systems and haven't really been able to keep up with the demand. So about a 12 months ago, my guidance said, you know, quit making the products. You need to take it to the next level, okay? If you really want to help out the planet in a big way, yes, you finally, after 15 years, my business started actually making a profit. I'm really surprised the IRS has not shut me down or audited me, because my business really took a loss for 13 years, complete loss. And <clears throat> so now it is, my guidance is very clear, take it to the next level, everything's done, these things are all hand, this is like, this is uh, like 40 inches long, and it's made of Pyrex. It cost me $950 to have one of these made, my cost. So to sell those affordably to somebody and make any profit at all, it's, it's not, Practical. I looked at making a mold. The mold's too much money for right now, 150000 for a mold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the equipment to make these on my own or hire people who love working with glass. These are actually Pyrex. And I'm going to go and do an Indigo Go campaign. Uh, raise the funds that way. <clears throat> this, this technology does not belong to me. It belongs to the planet. I was just a steward to... Um, agreed who helped to bring it into existence. And it's not, um, it's not new either. It's actually very ancient in a lot of ways. Um, so, anyways. So um, the vortices are purely gravity produced. And you don't need to start them or initiate no, them in the direction? No. And, and that's why the water loves this so much because 
because you're really treating water in a um, a very kind and gentle way. There is no forcing. There's a lot of other uh, technologies out there that spin water and spiral water, right? And you put them in line to your system. And yes, they help out. They do assist the water. Yet it's still based on the, the, the aggressive masculine forcing, pushing concept. And it's challenging because to have pressure to come out of your tap and not do these things, um, we must completely change all of our pipes. It's very clear to me. We must change all of our pipes. And who, whatever pipe company that catches on to this and wakes up to the importance of this and figures this out, uh, and, then, and then we become aware and conscious of the importance of installing these pipes, he's going to be a very successful pipe guy or woman. Whoever out there, you know, think about this because it would be a great business for somebody. And um, then we, we really can have this water that's, you know, coming to us in this lively, energetic state. But when you create this free-flowing centripetal interwinding vortex, you're creating a whole different baby than just putting water and, and making it spin a little bit on a pipe. Um, there's a tremendous amount of energy coming out here. This is zero point. Tremendous amount of energy coming out of here. And the key is learning how to harness this energy, this implosion. This is imploding. This is sucking and drawing inward. There's literally thousands of layers. When you look at one of these vortexes, all you're seeing basically is this thing in the middle going on. But what you really have happening is you have thousands of sheets. You literally have thousands of sheets individual sheets where the closer the water gets to this center, the main energy, the faster and faster they go. And the more of these sheets, more and more energy is generated until it's pulled into the middle. And this is basically, you think that the water creates this, but the water is not creating that. The water primary is the energy. And that's, that's the the water is being pulled and drawn, formed around that energy wake. So like a boat going across a lake, creating a wake. The boat creates the wake. The energy is creating the water to be formed around it. Where you most people think it's the other way. No, the water is creating that. No, actually it's not. And Victor Schauberger tried to explain this to many people, and he, had, he was a brilliant man way ahead of his time. Um, but what I was sharing with earlier in the talk is that what's happening is you, you, this thing will wobble. This vortex, you'll see a little wobbling, pulsating action. It will actually come out of this tip, you'll see it pulsate too. It goes shh, shh, shh. Literally tapping into the heartbeat of the universe, the heartbeat of this planet. And the wobbling effect is also, you'll see this, this wobbling is tapping into the wobble that this planet is doing. If this planet is not spinning on a, on a dime precisely, it has a little wobble. And this is again what Victor Schauberger tried to explain, the, the power of tapping into this energy. So um, there's so much unknown and yet to be discovered about implosion energy. Um, but Victor Schauberger is definitely a man who, <coughs> who understood it more than anybody. There was no doubt about it that I know of in his time and he did he did actually take if you do this with in a form with ambient air is what he basically did he took ambient air and got it going in the spiraling spinning implosion motion drawing inward which is again the feminine we have been living our lives more based on the explosive masculine energy all of our transportation is basically based on this explosive expansive masculine energy which, um, which doesn't work. It throws things out of balance. And that's what's happened with us. We've been so more in the masculine energy um, and, and not honoring the feminine as much and understanding the feminine principles of levity. Um, and yet we are coming into those times where we will start understanding this more. Our consciousness must raise enough to understand this or to be able to accept these technologies to be to come out into our world, we must raise our consciousness. This is one of the reasons why it hasn't been um, 
in my opinion, mainstream. Of course, there's people that have suppressed these technologies because of money, we know that. But in my opinion, it even goes beyond that. We weren't, we weren't ready because the consciousness of the human population on the planet wasn't ready for it. Because implosion technologies can also be misused in a very negative way, too. Which I feel we um, did in the times of the fall of Atlantis. Um, we misused a form of energy, and I think it was actually a form of implosion energy that almost ripped this planet apart. Um, <clears throat> again, that's just a theory and a hypothesis. I have no um, saying that's how it was. But anyways, is there any is other question? Is the water affected temperature-wise from the top of the vortex to the bottom? The you're, you're exactly correct. It's even it's colder as it gets more to the middle. Okay, so you can actually, if you make a, take a temperature reading, it's going to be warmer outside here. It's coldest right down here. So this actually has a cooling effect on water, too. It does. Cold in water is energy in water. Remember that. Cold in water is energy in water. And a lot of people don't like drinking uh, cold water. Okay? Which is okay. I'm not saying that's bad. But keep it cold to the best of your ability up until you're going to drink it because cold holds the energy and 39.2 degrees is the ideal temperature. It's why if you store vegetables in your refrigerator and you keep the refrigerator at 39, between 39 and 40 degrees, your produce is always going to last longest. It has to do with the water and the produce. You start going below that temperature or above that temperature, produce will not last nearly as long and it's because of the water, the water and the produce having effect with us energetically. So this is again why we have problems with the pipes and this friction and the straight line and how we're getting water from point A to point B. This friction is causing a form of heat. It's warming the water up. Most city tap water is like 65, 70 degrees. You go out to California, it, 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 city tap water in California is 65, 70 degrees. So it's lost a huge amount of its life force just because of that alone, of that temperature gradient. And yes, this is a cooling effect. And so if we get spinning the water down the pipes, we will allow it to stay cooler too. It'll naturally stay cooler. It'll naturally stay healthier. We won't need to put the chemicals in the water. We can use a frequency of vibration. The man who, uh, the man uh, I got the, the honor to meet was the inventor of the afterburner for jets. His name was Joel. And Joel told me one day, he said, you know, Randy, we took a, we took a single sideband radio and we took, ran a wire from it and we put it into the hole of the fishing boat and we ran it at 26 hertz. And he said you'd had no barnacles or algae grow on the hole of that boat. As long as we kept that hertz running into the hole of the boat, it would never, no algae or bacteria or barnacle would grow. So again, it's all about frequency. When we understand this and we keep the water happy, healthy, and alive, it's all about vibration, information we put into the water, and we won't, we won't have any problems with bacteria growing in the water. We will definitely will not need to use any of the chemicals that we're using in our city plants. Um, and that's one of my greatest missions, actually, because I, I have more compassion for city water probably than, than any of it because of the, so much um, abuse, basically and what it's doing to the environment of the people, uh, the, the plants, the animals that are also getting that city water. Um, it, it's a huge cost of money. I was in Encinitas a couple of years ago and they're replacing all these palm trees and all the stuff down this whole, you know, two and a half mile strip and I know they do this a lot. And I'm like, well, why would you have to need to replace all these palm trees and stuff all the time? It's because of the chemicals that they're that they're, that they're being watered with. And we're talking millions of dollars, I guarantee, if not in the billions, that you know, this, is, this, this money is being put out to replace all these plants and trees, etc. cetera. Uh, the cost of the chemicals, et cetera. It's just, it's, just, um, it, it's nonsense. It's, it's absolute nonsense, in my opinion. And um, we won't change it all until, until we have the solution. So that's what my mission is, to join with other people, create the create the solutions to the conditions 
and, and then bring this out in a big way and show people, hey, this is, this is the better, more effective way. We can scientifically prove this and validate this. Um, you're paying for that water. Stand up for yourself. Say, I want something better. 